Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to talk to you and show you step by step what it takes to lay an earth bag. And at the end of the video, we're going to share with you our very favorite tool that we've bought so far for our homestead. channel we're two rebels off grid this is Carrie. i'm doug we left colorado as fast as we could we moved out to cochise county arizona where we are setting up camp at outlaw acres farmstead and we're doing stuff we're doing stuff we're doing homesteading type stuff so we're building out a homestead basically from scratch so yeah. we bought our land it was raw land and we're developing everything on it it's completely off grid so follow along with us if you are interested in stuff like that and feel free to share it with anybody that you think might be interested yeah and uh seems like the weather is the theme for us all the time lately and it is again so in this video yep but uh yeah so we have shot some film during some of the sunniest days and once again we're trapped in our trailer again a snowstorm uh, right now the sun's come out but it's still too cold i'm not going out there today but uh yeah. we shot some film and we decided that you know we've kind of breezed through all of our processes we really haven't showed you how to make do an earth bag or anything like that so i think that this is a good uh time to show those who are new to this type of building method and so that's what we're gonna do yeah, I think when you watch other people's videos and you haven't actually done it hands-on, I just feel like it's important for you to understand like what it takes to lay, <laughs> to lay these things. It's not easy. It's also not hard, but it is definitely a little bit tedious and it does involve some work and some sweat. So it's really rewarding though once it's up because it just feels like it feels like solid as solid can be like more solid than any house or apartment that I've ever lived in. Mm -hmm. Definitely more solid than our trailer, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they say that the earth bag technique are derived from the military. The military actually experimented with building bomb proof, earthquake, fireproof, uh, rodent proof, insect proof, termite proof buildings. And the earth bag structure was, uh, the one that they thought was i think bulletproof too right yeah bulletproof too yeah. well i mean there might be a couple ballistics out there that can get through <laughs> it but uh yeah but uh yeah so it stood the 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 tests yeah. and uh during this this storm we had 30 40 mile per hour gusts and that thing didn't get phased at all uh whereas we can't say the same for our tents and all that other type of shelters uh, again, in England, they call our American houses uh, stick houses because they're made of wood and they consider that a very flimsy uh, uh, material to build from as opposed to, you know, they're notorious for stonework and brickwork and stuff like that um, over there in England. But uh, I think we should get on with this. We're going to show you some video in the background as we are doing some of these steps and we'll just kind of explain what we're doing. First step in the process of laying an earth bag. Well, first of all, the very, very first step, I was going to say the first step is sifting, but that's not actually the first step. The first step is actually Doug getting on the tractor and driving to a part of our property where there is dirt that is perfect for building earth bag structures. So Doug starts out by, it's probably a five hour process to get enough dirt for one row or one course That's or more one like two rows oh two okay two i was thinking it was one but but to do two of those so it's it's a good you know half good solid half day of work for him he's sitting on the tractor so it's not like crazy hard or anything but yeah. it's time right so we only have so much daylight hours and so that is the first step the second step is us shoveling that dirt into this uh, against our sifter that we built and that filters out not just rocks, but we're also trying to filter out organic material, right? Like sticks, yeah. 
sticks and leaves and things like that. You don't want things in your earth bags that are going to degrade, not degrade, but break down over time, organic type materials. Oh, you don't want sharp rock in there either. Yeah. Because that'll puncture the bags from within, especially yeah. when you're tampering them. But, uh, I mean, we could probably up our our sifter to allow smaller rocks in, you know, like a quarter size is fine to be in there. Yeah. It's just that the rocks that we've been pulling out are like size of my fist. So mainly we're just sifting out big rocks and sticks and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So the that's the first step is the sifting. The second step is typically Doug will shovel that sifted dirt into the, we use a cement mixer to, to make our earth bag filling if you will and uh okay, go ahead. that's usually he does that he's faster with the shovel than i am so how many yeah. shovels do you do i mean right now when i'm when i did the first three layers i was putting lime to it so yeah. the lime would be you know three shovels of lime to nine shovels of dirt and uh that really binds the material up together but then I did a row without the lime just because I wanted that first three layers to be pretty solid and it seems like it's hard, hardening up pretty good where I've decided I'm not going to bother with the lime for the rest of the, the steps except maybe around windows and doors I'll probably add the lime again but as for the actual soil that we have it's pretty good so it's hardening up like a brick basically yeah um and we'll save some money not putting the lime on there but using just straight up dirt we can apply lime as a as a finished surface as a finished coat on these earth bags anyhow it yeah. won't affect it because we're not using concrete in there or anything like that but yeah but yeah after the after so the wait how many so one one mixer full is going to be basically 12 shovels of whatever. So nine shovels of dirt, three shovels of lime, or, or just 12 yeah, it's shovels one to of dirt. Three, one to three. One, one to three. three. Okay. Lime to dirt. And then you mix in water. <laughs> yeah, so water, you want the consistency of like a, you don't want it to be soaking wet. So when you tamp the bags, it's dripping out water. That would give you lots of tr troubles. But uh, you want it kind of like a... Uh, you ever made a cheesecake crust kind of want oh, it to be somewhat yeah. uh moist but not if you squeeze it you don't want it dripping anything so yeah uh, that's quite uh an analogy to use for it's a good for analogy a dirt house. but yeah <laughs> cheesecake crust <laughs> yep cheesecake crumbly crust but from there we started out using from the concrete mixer we load up buckets and go fill up the earth bags but yeah we took that advice from the last video you know clay showed us a new technique using the tractor so yeah. we're doing three loads uh from the mixer at a time now and bringing it over to the bag site yeah and it works out really well so doug was hauling those buckets five gallon buckets and like physically walking them over it's so much better to have the tractor do it so the tractor takes a lot of work off of his back which is good i could carry the buckets but not very efficiently and so it was a lot of that was falling on doug so this way is much better and this way we can just scoop right out of the tractor bucket and with our we each have like a little bucket i have a two gallon i think his is three gallon and we we scoop from from there and then we fill the earth bags up and it takes i don't know like maybe five or six bucketfuls of our buckets in order to fill the earth bag dolly up high enough to where doug can scooch it forward and move it yeah and then uh there's a point we didn't shoot any video of this but uh you're going to want to measure your bags to the length and add more footage to it because we notice that the more you tamp the bag it actually decreases the length of the bag so yep. i think that it's i would add a good uh i'd uh, say 30 percent yeah 30 percent mm -hmm. more in length of the bag that you want to to do your yeah your wall with. every bag that we've cut thinking we're cutting it to length we, we've been short <laughs> yeah and then you're going to want to get some kind of band or a big rubber band or a stretcher exercise band or something to hold that bag in place yeah um i kind of have uh nixed the the, the dolly, dolly because i found i'm just as fast without it and I, that's one less thing to have to worry about balancing when you're standing on top of that wall there. So yeah. um, I'd rather be just concentrating on my feet in the bag than having to worry about holding a dolly and do, letting the dirt out and 
carrying on and keeping my balance. Yep. But uh, yeah, so we then load up the bags mm -hmm. uh, a little at a time. I guess it's important to say you want to keep that uh, double barrel system completely full to the top before you actually lift it up and move it. Mm -hmm. um, this keeps the bags full so that when you go to tamp it, it's going to tampen the exact same height and width of yep. the bag. So it's maximizing the, the stretchability of these bags. If yeah. you have a little less dirt here or too much dirt here, you're going to have high points and you're also going to have like holes in the bags. But we, I mean, our first five layers, we we're still experimenting. So we figure any flaws in the bags themselves can be fixed with the cob layer. Mm -hmm. um, you can backfill in there and, and make it level flush. Yeah. Over. Yeah. We're so we're our new technique that we're using. We're way faster than we were when we first started out. So if Doug and I are like, if we have enough dirt up there and he and I start early in the day, somewhat early in the day, we can get two courses or rows done in a, in a, in a regular work day. And that's just taking like a quick lunch break and really pushing. So we can, we can get two rows done a day is what we're finding. Maybe we'll find some other ways to shave time off, but I don't think so. I don't think our process has anywhere to improve at this point but we work pretty good together typically doug will do the tamping along the top and we've just really are focusing on keeping those walls the sides really nice and and um plumb with the wall below so that we're going straight up so that we're not like you know having one row that's too too tight and then another one that's spilling out over the edge and then another one that you know we want it to be nice and smooth as much as possible that will give us less work in the long run. So we're working hard on the tamping. So I typically do the sides, Doug does the top and then. Yeah, and what else are we missing? Tying um, the bag, I think. So tying the bag, mm -hmm. uh, we were just messing around. We figured yeah. out by spinning the bucket at the end of the bag length, uh, it really makes it tight instead of unraveling it and sitting there trying to twist it like this and then put a tie around it. We figured just spin the bucket. Yep. Uh, have somebody come around with a little we got little wire clips we got from home depot i think it's for t tying rebar together so yeah they're rebar ties that we use they're just flexible metal ties but they they have a little hook on each end and then you can hook this tool into it and then just basically twist it it's like a you know like a bread bag twist and it twists it nice and tight and then we cut the bag yeah and that's how that finishes and I think it's kind of important that we don't set you guys up for failure on those who do want to do this building technique. I don't want to pretend like it's all happy, happy, joy, joy, and and, and, and fun. we should be singing <laughs> and dancing while we're putting these bags up. But uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of addicting just seeing it going up and everything yep. like this, but there is a lot of work in it. And mm -hmm. if you're not physically able to do that stuff, you might have problems doing this kind of building system. Yeah. And it's also a, a, you can't really rush this. I don't think, I mean, you can, but you're going to end up injuring yourself. Yep. Um, so if you have all the time in the world, then this is the perfect system for you. Yeah. If you got a good back, this is the perfect system for you. Yep. It is literally probably, well, I think earth ships are probably on par with, I think they're harder. Yeah. But. They <laughs> might be harder and there's more. Yeah. So, but it's basically like it's all labor <laughs> so it's our time and it's not our money <laughs> and we're okay with that so you know if it we're it's heavy on labor so we just can't stress that enough it's yeah. not it's not for everybody um we don't normally do this type of work just in our everyday lives and you might be wondering you know doug and i are both 52 coming up on 53 this year and we're not really it's not really bothering us too much we've been a little bit sore but I think we're going to start stretching like before we start working at the end of the day and I think that'll help but really nothing serious like we're not lifting anything that is and un unusually ridiculous or anything like that so just to yeah that and so what's coming up we've come up we were going to put cleats every three bags but is what we're going to do is we're we skipped it. We're going to go to the fifth one, which we're done with the fifth bag row. Mm -hmm. We have to shuggy band some cleats um, mm -hmm. 
And because these cleats are actually going to come out for us to put structural things inside the chicken coop, like the chicken wire needs a board to, to uh, be nailed to, the chicken mm -hmm. wire to be nailed to. The nesting boxes have the to have The nesting boxes have to have, I don't think we need them at row five, but maybe like seven or so. But mm -hmm. um, the nesting boxes will need it. Uh, we need to put Purchase. cleats that don't need to be shuggy band that will hold the bags to the the door, the bottle wall, mm -hmm. and the chicken door. And, and those are hidden cleats. So those yeah. cleats, you, we're not shuggy banding those if you're wondering yeah. because they're not even going to show. Yeah. They're going to be literally on the inside of the earth bag structure. So it won't be exposed to the elements in any way. And we do need to shuggy band. We need to start putting in random cleats for where we're putting our chicken, um, I'd like to call per them perches. perches. Yeah. But I'm going to be putting those in with mesquite wood. So they're going to be mesquite wood branches going all the way up to the top of the to the tower. And we need to just kind of randomly put them there. So the cleats there and they need to be shuggy bands. So we have something to screw these branches into. So that's going to be something else. Yeah. The other thing I was walking up there today and I realized um, we got extra rebar. So I'm going to go ahead and punch some while we're at the fifth row. Mm -hmm. I'm going to punch maybe four or five rebar stakes through multiple bag layers mm -hmm. just to give it even more security. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that's difficult to do or not. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, you got a sledgehammer. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. I mean, we yeah. we haven't had the weather hasn't been going good for us lately. So we've been having a lot of downtime, which is probably good for our backs because, you yeah. know, even when you exercise, you're supposed to work out, then take a day off, work out, take it. So if you're just going, you know, gung ho on shoveling every day, you might get injured easier. We so, probably would too, so you guys. We have a hard time stopping both of us. And so it's probably God's way of slowing us down. <laughs> <laughs> so you got anything else to say? Uh, no, I just, I want to talk to you guys just really briefly to wrap the video up about what our favorite farmstead, homestead piece of equipment is, tool that we've bought so far. It's the one thing that we really did not think that we needed. And the more we get into this and the longer we've been here, the more and more grateful we are that we bought it. And I bet a lot of you can already guess what it is, but that would be our tractor. So we went into this thinking we don't need a tractor. And then as we started hiring people to do tractor work for us because it was raw land when we bought it, we started realizing we could have bought a tractor. I mean, not bought a tractor, but we started thinking about how much money was going to pay other people to do stuff that we could do with our own tractor. And we started to see the value in buying one. So we did a video on it, but we purchased one that was re or re refurbished, I think is the yeah. word that we want to use. Um, it's a 1980s tractor. And we bought that very specifically because we want to be able to work on it. We don't want it to have computer stuff in it that we, you know, that's too expensive to fix or that we can't get parts for. So Doug is very ha handy with stuff like that. He's actually already fixed some hoses that had split and it's been wonderful. Yeah, it's a love-hate relationship and it was, a <laughs> and it was also, a, like I said, Bonnie's trying to kill me. I think i sworn at her more times than than i have anybody maybe else on this planet maybe that's why she doesn't like you i talk sweet to her and she never treats me that way but uh carrie's daughter's coming over soon and she's giving her a paint job and i told yeah. her make sure you put a nice big grimace on her you know so <laughs> because that's the attitude she gives me all the time yep yep but it she it's been wonderful to have that yeah tractor. it's definitely if it wasn't for the tractor uh doing swales and all that stuff would be insane yeah not just, I mean, it's most of the work would fall on us, you know. Yep. We don't have a crew or a team of mules or anything like that, so. Yeah, and as we get higher up, um, as we get higher up the the chicken coop structure, you know, we're going to have to start getting up on scaffolding. And we were trying to picture, like, climbing up and down scaffolding, carrying buckets of dirt, where we can just lift Bonnie, Doug can just lift Bonnie's bucket up, and then we can reach right to it, and it'll be a lot easier, I think. Yep. So, yeah, so that's the tractor. All right, so. Anything else you can think of? No. You guys might have questions. Some of you might be considering building with earth bag construction, and we're newbies, like we're just learning, and we're really learning as we go. We've watched other people do videos, but 
until you actually do it yourself, it's really, it's really hard to get a feel for it. But we like it. We like the process. We just need the weather to cooperate a little bit more. <laughs> but again, you know, things will get done as they're, as they're ready to get done. So yeah, and yeah. we've got the, we already are ready. We're content and everything for the chickens to be right here on the we've kitchen accepted, table. We've accepted the inevitable. The chicken, the baby chicks are going to be in the trailer with us probably for at least a few days. Hopefully not much longer no, than that. No, it's going to be more than a few days. I guarantee it. Mm, well, we'll yep. see. We'll see. So <laughs> anyway, so thanks for sticking around to the end, you guys. And we appreciate you. We appreciate your support. You guys are awesome and leave us a comment ask us a question we'd love to answer questions that you have and appreciate you following along with us feel free to share this with anybody that you think is interested in homesteading or might be interested in this type of construction it's very economical and uh, it's pretty pretty cool so we'll see you guys soon <laughs>